Hello and welcome back to the channel. On today's video we look at this very old and very worn out Comtron CB radio that I picked up off of eBay with a princely sum of about £25 a while back now. As you can see from these photos this is a lot of uh, wear and tear on this old set and it's certainly not in its original factory condition. Now I like to bring these radios up to and as near to new condition as I can and I very often don't spray the cases to do that. However, on this occasion, I think you'll agree that this case has seen rather better days and would benefit from a bit of spray. Now, this radio is based upon the same Maxon chassis as you can see on all these other radios here, the Midland 2001, 3001, 4001. It's also in the Colt 295 and the 295A and, of course, on the Maxon 4E. So it's a very popular chassis on the inside. And uh, on the outside, this has certainly been very popular with its previous owners, although it's sporting the incorrect volume and squelch knobs there. Uh, however, the channel knob does appear to be the original knob and is present and correct. So here we go with a bit of uh, work, let's just say. So anyway, buckle yourselves in. This is going to be a bit of fun. As, as is always the case with CB radios, they're very often cleaner on the inside than they are on the outside, as you can see with this radio. And you can see here, this has had a sound chip replaced, probably because uh, the radio has been reverse polarity at some point in its time with rather a large fuse or no fuse in place. And um, as is always, the, these little screws at the front here tend to corrode, particularly when these radios are used in mobile applications where the water or moisture or condensation pools at the bottom of the radio. Anyway, this radio appears to have been thrown in a bucket in a garage or something and they've been doing decorating. It seems to have black paint and black jack or something on the side of it there, as you can see. And uh, to, to most people, they would probably think this would be a scrap chassis. But the one thing I try and do is avoid making any of these sets scrap chassis. So looking at some old pictures of a Comtron to get an idea of what the knobs look should look like, I went into the design package and drew up a, uh, a replacement knob for the unit. Now, this knob will do nicely until I can either A, find some genuine replacement knobs or something very close. So anyway, removing the front plate off, it didn't look so bad under here. Um, the meter light is a little bit faded where it's obviously been in the sun at some point, probably mounted in a, either on the dashboard of a lorry or uh, within the cabin of a car. Anyway, the, the first thing I do very often with these when I can see they're a bit dirty is give the switches a good switch clean first before I even power the radio on very often. And these toggle switches also very often stiffen up. Um, the, the blackjack or the paint or whatever it was come off with a, a bit of alcohol here, uh, it's 100% alcohol and a good rub with a, a cloth. It did take a little bit more scratching to get the rest of it off which brought it down to bare metal. So with that I decided to do a little trick which I sometimes use which is a wax based paint. Uh, now this paint is a metal effect paint which you can paint on and uh, it also acts to protect the metal from corrosion as well and it can also be removed again if somebody bought the radio and they didn't like the look however it's my radio and i'm not selling it so it's for me so anyway i think you'll agree it does look a little bit better than what it did do um, the original speaker seemed okay um, i would test this on my signal generator anyway so i popped the cases out and got them ready for preparation I use a little mouse sander to do this and a wire brush on a drill and I take them back to as near as bare metal as I can get because you get the very best paint finish doing this. Um, it does take a little bit of time but it's worth the extra effort because it really does make the radios pop once you've actually spent the effort in preparing the cases. So it didn't take too long for the little knobs to come out. I printed off a few just as samples really uh, because obviously the big trick with these is getting the chrome effect onto the knobs. Um, I purchased a pre-made mic from an eBay seller which I wasn't happy about because it came with a rubberized plug even though the listing has shown it as having a metal plug but we'll fix that later. So anyway turning the radio on uh, I couldn't get any transmit out of the radio at all and I couldn't get any audio either. So I popped the circuit manual down, had a little look through the circuit diagram and with a little bit of fault finding and tracing, I traced it to the front squelch volume switch. Now this switches it between PA mode and between CB mode. And as you can see there, some moisture had got into the switch and the switch contacts had actually corroded. So I took the switch completely apart and you can see there it's corroded and broken. So I linked the switch out 
and uh, we now have a fully functioning receive and uh, I set about doing a bit of a tune up on the radio here I was also pleased to see that we'd also got full 5 watts of transmit power as well I'm not going to go into great detail to the tune-up of the radio here because there are many other videos on here such as UK CB servicing which cover this chassis in quite a lot of detail on a number of videos. But anyway, safe to say, using my rudimentary test gear here, I managed actually to drag this thing uh, back in fully into spec and uh, got it working. Now the transmit LED didn't work. It's a common fault on these. I've seen a few videos where they have blown. Standard 3mm LED replacement slotted straight in and uh, you can see it's all fully working now as it should do so as i said i did a quick uh, alignment of the vco on these radios this is a common problem that the test point uh, doesn't have a link in it so i added that link there so you can get your test probe in on the other side and set the vco up and this set up really nicely as you can see there now that Look, might look like a cheap meter the uh, victor vc3165 but it's very accurate and uh, i made a stand for uh for spraying these knobs because i need them to be nice and still as i needed to get a really nice chrome finish on these which you'll see in a little bit so anyway as i said this microphone i wasn't happy with these rubber plugs are dreadful if you do have a microphone with these on get rid of them fit a, a metal one i use these uh ryan nutric type ones they have they're a little bit pricey but knights sell them fairly reasonably and um as you can see there it's a much more robust plug and you can see here the effort that i took in sanding the cases really does pay off when it comes to spraying them these were just done in my back garden on a cardboard box and blingy knobs yes i was really pleased with the way these came out it's going to take a little bit of time for the paint to fully cure on those but uh, they're certainly okay to get them on the video and they're very very shiny i think you'll agree um, the front fascia cleaned up fairly well. I think it could probably do with rubbing down and spraying, but uh, that maybe I'll do on another day. Um, so I started reassembling this little radio and uh, got it back uh, into some sort of uh, uh, affair. And the, the thing to watch with these um, is when you screw those screws in the top, don't uh, over tighten them. You see that on many CB radios because you'll crack the plastic fascia. So uh, don't do that if you do uh, fix up one of these radios. Luckily, as I said, the original speaker was still fine, and the um, uh, as you'll see there now with the case on, it really does look very, very nice. I actually did polish this off and lacquer the case after this video because I noticed it was a bit of a fingerprint magnet. But you'll see the um, you'll see compared to the how it was before, it's quite a transformation, and I hope that uh, has given you some confidence if you attempt one of these yourself that um, you can actually get really good results. So I think with that sat on the shelf, it'd probably be a good idea to see if Mick is around, uh, who's a couple of miles away, so we can just do a little bit of a test. So uh, over to myself and Mick in the shack for a test. Well, we've got the uh, CB2000 here, the Fidelity, and we've got Mick at the other end. He's about a um, mile and a half away. I'm running the little uh, um, a mini Starduster in the loft, I think it is. But anyway, we're getting a lot better performance than we are from the silver rod for some reason. Anyway, how's it sound in your end, Mick? Uh... Yeah, thank you, Paul, for that. Over. That was very, very clear, actually, to me. Coming through on a, a CP6 at the bottom of the garden, which is about uh, 95 foot away. So, uh, yes, perfect audio, perfect signal, and very clean on, on the waterfall as well back to you Paul. okay Rog cheers for that Mick we'll change over to the Comtron and then we'll use that we use the this and then we'll use that we use the, this obviously Fidelity as a reference so if you want to stop your recording now that's great and we'll the second video we'll do on the Comtron all right here we go so we're on the Comtron now and see if Mick is there right are you ready to record then Mick Okay, right, that's brilliant. Okay, well, we've got the Comtron CB40F. This was uh, quite a rough radio I picked up off of. Quite a rough radio I picked up off of eBay and uh, I've tuned up and cleaned up and it's looking really nice. And uh, I was just wondering how it sounds in comparison to the uh, reference radio, which is the Fidelity CB2000 there, Mick. I wonder what your thoughts are. 
As a matter of interest, is this still on the antenna it's in your lot? Yeah, Rog, using the same antenna, so it's the, the, the test is fair, yeah, it's a loft antenna. Yeah, okay, to be honest, I, I can't uh, uh, moan about any of them because they're both the same audio, very good audio. Showing clean on the, uh, on the waterfall. Was that the radio we were trying on the silver rod a few minutes ago? No, I haven't tried the uh, this this radio yet. I've only used the uh, the Fidelity, and I think receive is a bit better uh, on the Comtron than it was on the Fidelity. Uh, I haven't tuned the Fidelity, but um, receive certainly seems a bit sharper on the Comtron. There's less noise in the background. Um, so yeah, and you're you're a very nice signal with me, obviously. <laughs> Again, just running a standard four watts of this, but it should be absolutely uh, bang on frequency, hopefully. Yes, it sounds very nice for, uh, for what I'm receiving here. I know it's only a short distance, but it is. It's a good signal, good audio, and I would be pleased with that. Okay, Rog, that's, that's great. Well, thanks for that. Um, this sort of wraps the test up, and uh, thanks to, to Mick for helping out uh, this morning with this test. It's been, it took me a while. I've had this radio. I've been trying to finish this video for over a month, and uh, with bad weather and everything, I'll spray these, uh, clean them up, and spray them up outside next to see. So getting out into the garden has been tricky because it's been raining. So uh, yeah, it took me a while to do this, but thanks for thanks for your help. Uh, superb. Right, you can uh, stop recording now. I'm going to your please. To hear you, I want to say uh, thank you um, for the nice short excuse. All I wish you all the best for you and your family and i hope i catch you again i hope you enjoyed today's video on the next week's video we look at the maxcom 30e now this was in a very poor state it had been left in a barn half in a bucket of water with a broken channel knob and uh, the main point with that was to see if we can make sure it doesn't turn into a scrap chassis so as you can see with this comtron i think we brought it back nicely into shape and obviously uh, they're all work in progress these radios you can take them down you can respray bits take them apart and um, you know but i think as a general start i'm really pleased with this so i hope you've enjoyed that we'll catch you on the next one take care